Good morning, everybody. It is Hit and Hustle from irisportsdaily.com. I am your host, Greg Famong, and with me, as always, is Jamie Uyama. Jamie, uh, it's it's Tuesday. You just recorded Power Hour. How, first of all, how are you feeling? I know you haven't been feeling too good. Uh, I'm still sick. Um, I might have to mute the mic a couple times to cough or blow my oh. nose, but, um, you know, uh, got through Power Hour. Going to power through uh, Hit and Hustle right we're now. Gonna we're going to power. We got, got a Hit and Hustle. Hour and we're going to power through. We got a Hit and Hustle. That's that's the uh, that's the, the the brand of this show. We hit and we hustle. And, and we give 100% all the time, 110%. Um, so thank you, everyone, for tuning in. Um, we appreciate it. If uh, if this is your first time, okay, hit the subscribe button. Hit the like button. Uh, if you're watching on replay and you, and you like what you see here, uh, please do the same. That really helps out the channel and everything like that. Uh, we got a lot to talk about today. First, we're going to um, we're going to talk about a little a little recruiting um, recruiting update. Jamie, there's things happening, things are moving. There's uh, there's there's a lot of moving parts. Um, it looks like the 2023 quarterback situation might be getting uh, sorted out for Notre Dame, and that's uh, that's going to be good news. Also, um, if you're a member of the uh, Irish Sports Daily. Uh, our, our website. If you're a subscriber there, uh, Matt Freeman put up a, a couple of good updates on um, on Peyton Bowen and uh, Jaden Greathouse, and you're going to want to check those out. Um, some some I think positive news I think uh, is a way to look at that. So you're going to want to look at that, and we'll talk about that as well. And then we'll do um, a Navy wrap up. So um, that's what we'll do. That's that's what's going to be on tap today. Um, and Coach Humph is in the chat. Um, ready to talk about, ready to talk about Tommy Reese. Um, uh, first of all, okay. He, he, I'll, I'll put up the first comment here and you can get into it since it's like recruiting related. Um, Tommy Reese is going to mess around and cost us Dylan Edwards, who was recruited to replace Deuce Vaughn at K state, who has the same height and weight. Deuce gets 20 plus carries and three plus catches a game. Um, do you think that Tommy Reese is going to mess around and cost Notre Dame, um, Dylan Edwards? No, I also don't think that K State has Audra Costemi and Logan Diggs. So I'm not that Deuce Vaughn is a really great player, but I don't think Chris Tyree is Deuce Vaughn right now. And I've always been a Chris Tyree fan, but like if Chris Tyree was Deuce Vaughn, he'd get more he get more touches right now, right? And I'm not saying that I don't think that Tommy Reese could do some more stuff with um uh with Tyree as he is but like he could just point to Kyron Williams and just say like look what Kyron Williams did and you're a lot right. faster than Kyron Williams. so it's like it's I don't know I think that's an overreaction I, I agree with that um I, I don't I don't think I, I I if I was a running back especially if I was Dylan Edwards I would be fired up to play in this I think offense. everyone's got it's, be it's 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 running back centric um they get them. They they get. They can get them out in motion. They can get them inside. They can throw them the ball. They can do a whole bunch of things. He should be. I mean, look at. I I, I understand. There's a. If you're a wide receiver, I I could understand that there would be some hesitation or something like that. But for a uh, for a running back, especially a running back who's versatile like Dylan Edwards, um, no, I I, I think uh, I, I think he should be fired up to play in this offense. Um, I mean, Chris Tyree's a, a kickoff returner. I could see Dylan Edwards absolutely doing that. I mean, certainly fast enough for it. Um, so yeah, that, that's how I feel about it. Um, and then we'll get to the uh, last question from Coach Humph here. Am I being too critical of Tommy when I point out that three of his 11 games is the OC? He has been shut down out in the second half. Uh, Oki State, Ohio State, Navy. Um, does that happen at top 10 programs? I don't know the three of his 11 games as the OC. I mean, he's um, been he's been the OC since 2020. Yeah. So um, I think 2020 counts. Um, but I mean, I don't know. Do, do you want to do you want to respond to that? I guess. I mean, that's not good. I, I mean, no. I don't think it's good. Like whatever. I, I as he brings it up, I think Coach Hunt brings up a good point there. That isn't good. Um, I mean, I will say in terms of, um, I, I think part of it is if you look at these last, the the last two, the latter two, yeah, I think quarterback had a lot to do with it. And then I think if you look at the OK State game, I think like they were in scoring position. They turned the ball over twice. 
Yeah. Like, so I don't know. I mean, I, I, I don't think, um, I don't think he called a bad game in that OK State game at all. Um, I think you can question certainly some of the stuff in the Navy game, but I, as we're going to go over too, I think the quarterback had a lot to do with it. Right. And I, like I said, you know, I see a couple comments like, um, it, well, Arrow 520 says they didn't get shut out in the second half against OK State. I, that's true. That is um, true. That is a, a fair take, right? He absolutely did not. Um, so and, and get it right, Coach Hump. <laughs> the other just, part too is like playing, buddy. the other Sorry. part too is um, look. It, it, it kind of goes back to what we've talked about so many times on this on this show, right? And I think people, again, I encourage you to subscribe to the show so you kind of know where we've come from, right? Because we're kind of rehashing comments, but the, I, when you say it's the quarterback is the issue, and especially in Stanford, right? We a lot of open guys, um, I think, in this latest game. A lot of opportunities to get the ball out before um, you take a sack. Um, we've seen it in kind of every game where, hey, there's there's open guys that need to be hit. Um, and then someone will come back and say, well, Tommy Reese recruited him. And it's like, that's true, right? Okay, fine. But that's a different conversation, right? It's, I, I've said it a number of times. There's a, there's a recruiting development piece. And then there's scheme play calling piece. And there's, I think they're, they're kind of a different thing. I mean, they're intertwined when the person you brought in is the one who isn't, um, you know, the, 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 the person you brought in is, is the one who isn't executing your, your schemes and your play calls. But again, I, I just think it's a separate issue. Um, but so, okay, this is what I want to do now, Jamie. I want, I want to get into, um, the Kenny Menchie situation. I think a lot of people are excited about him. Um, and you, you have been on him since uh, July. You sent out a tweet. You said uh, you thought Kenny Menchie was going to be a player who um, was going to have the kind of meteoric rise that we saw from CJ Stroud late in his senior year. And um, who was it? Jackson Dart, I think, who also yeah. had a, had a big rise in the rankings. Um, and so you've been on uh, Kenny Menchie since uh, the, uh, since since the summer so i'm going to pull up some we're going to i'm going to pull up his uh, highlights here this is from his junior season uh he doesn't have full game or a uh like full highlights from his senior yeah, year yeah he just yet. has game highlights yeah. yeah it's just game highlights so we're going to go through his junior year and we're going to talk about kenny menchie um and what you see from him obviously so right now just looking at the stats um 61 passer as a um 61 passer as a junior in high school and, um, I mean, what do you think of that? Right? Like, so we look at like a lot of the highlights and obviously there's a really good ball placement here from him. There's going to be some really good touch. Um, I love, I love the way he, you know, there's, there's one thing to, we, 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 we use the term drop a ball in the bucket. It's another thing when it's it almost looks like you are placing the ball in the bucket. And that's what Kenny Menchie's doing. Like he literally, there's a number of throws in here where it literally looks like he takes the ball and places it in the exact spot where it needs to go to his receivers. That's really good, obviously, and it's, it's a great thing to see. It seems like he has great touch on the deep ball. The ball lands soft, very easy to catch. Um, but 61% passing is is not great for a um, for a, a high school um, a high school quarterback. Do you do you see that? Do you see anything in his game? Where you feel like that might it, that that's a product of, you know, his release or the way that he plays, or maybe it's a product of, you know, just it's it's high school and maybe the, the receive, you know, you're you're kind of, you have the the receivers are what you got, right? And you got and you got to go from there. Like, do you feel like there's anything mechanically that you see that might be causing um, some in, inaccuracy? Um, I think sixty one percent. I don't think it's great, but it's not bad. It's not like concerning. To me, that's not okay. concerning to me. I also think that um, anything above 60, I think, is like adequate. And I also think that he literally won the most accurate passer at Elite 11 this year. So yeah. um, I don't think you have to worry too much about that. And like you said, you just see so many throws where he drops it in the bucket. <clears throat> he gives his guy an opportunity to make plays after the catch. Um so he's capable he's yeah. capable and i think and also too like i don't know how much because one of the other things that people look at with a lot of this stuff too is that you're like 61 percent. well like 
how many of his throws, I mean, the, you, we didn't see a lot of his on his highlights of like throws yeah. behind the line of scrimmage. And sometimes people take that out or whatever. They don't want to show those. But there's a lot of times people do show that. And I'm like, I, it doesn't look like his offense. It uh, looks like they take a lot of shots. Yeah. And if you're going to take a lot of shots, your uh, percentages are going to be good. It's, yeah. it's not going to be good, right? Like, yeah. because like 50% on like, you know, on deep balls is like really good. Right. So, yeah. um, so I think, you know, I, I don't know, um, the context of like how many times, how much like quick game they're doing and stuff that gives them like those easy things, because there's a yeah. lot of times too, like, I mean, look at Drew Pine in this game, 81%. And you're like, man, what an accurate game. Right. Um, or, or what, what, a, you know, just, just a pinpoint ac- accuracy. Yeah. But like, you know, there's context added to the game where like, well, he didn't let this ball go here or, and maybe if he threw this instead of holding on to it, it would have been incomplete. Or maybe if, you know, even some of the stuff with, um, Lindsay made two ridiculous catches in this game. And obviously one was just insane. Right. Yeah. And as Jabe pointed out here in, in the comments too, right. He's 70% as a senior. So, um, it's kind of what you want to see. You want to see that incremental, improvement and you want to see a guy who gets better and i mean 70 percent is 70 percent yeah all right let's let's uh hit play and we'll talk it over we will talk it over obviously that offer list has greatly improved since yeah uh, and i mean pitt wasn't even on there and he ended up committing to Pitt. yeah um yeah and you just see so many of these plays where it's just like i think what you said earlier greg about touch and catchable You know, like it's just there. It's always there. Right. And like right. some of those are like the gimme plays, but like, like this throw right here um, is just, it's just right there. It's right, right where he needs to be. A guy like, doesn't have to wait up for it. Doesn't have to wait up for it. Right. And it's top of his drop. Boom. The ball is out. Right. And w- this like, throw here, that's this throw that, that that's was unbelievable. Yes. Let's, that, let's rewind it. I want to yeah. rewind it again. That's and an that's one of the throws, throw. yeah, that really stood out to me. I mean, look at he throws this living. ball. Look at he throws look, this ball. Like that guy's there. Open. He's not open. That's not open. he's throwing a guy open. That's anticipation, right? That's anticipation. There's, I mean, it's unbelievable. Right and, and it's not even just that. He, yeah, and it's in stride. <laughs> yeah, it's in stride. It's not just like oh, the guy has to make a great catch. It's like yeah, oh no, he can keep running. He can keep running, right? And a lot of these plays too, the ball is like, go oh, where it's like, this guy's not open. He doesn't have to wait for the guy to get open. Yeah. Right. I want to and- talk about this play too, because, um, so here's one where the DB thinks he's in a good spot and he turns and looks. And I've always said, like, you got to be careful when looking back in as a college player, because in college, these guys are good enough to where it's like, he's not throwing it to you, man. He's throwing it to that guy. And you need to be, You need to be covering the receiver and be in a good spot, right? Because the receiver's not pinned, so he's not throwing it to you. This ball is right over. Like, look, he he thinks he's got a beat on it. Oh, wait, whoops. Right over my hands, right into his arms. Like, that is, that is, like, such a good play for a high school player to make. And this is a junior now. Like, he's a junior in high school making this throw. And it's like, that's, that's perfect touch. That's perfect placement. And it's just kind of fitting it in because look, he's got to get it over this guy. He's yeah. got to get it beyond him, but he's got the end line. He's got to worry about too. It's just a great throw. If it's great a little short, there. it's picked or it's tipped or whatever, right? Yeah. This is another one. Look it. There's, look at right look at that in window between two defenders. Only yeah. spot. The only spot that it could go right in between two defenders, and it lands soft, and it, and it lands soft. soft again. Right. So it's not like he has to. He has to fit it in. It's going to be super hard throw. It's like he's got like. To throw it I'm hard. just going to be honest too. If you're if you are Jane Greathouse, Braylon James, Rico Flores, you know, you're you're watching, you're like, I don't really know not much about Kenny Minchie. I'm gonna watch his highlight tape. I'm like, oh, I like this guy. Yeah. Because this guy, he literally just puts it on the money on the deep ball. There's a little right? bit of mobility here. Yeah. He do, can do run, you, he can escape. Do you think this is uh do you think this is Deshaun Kaiser mobility right here? Uh I don't know. Maybe a little at, less than that. A little less, but he can he can pull it and run. Like yeah. I mean, I don't think he's a runner. I think he's a pocket guy. But I yeah. think like you know, so 
Uh, Joseph asked in, in the comments too if, if I could compare and contrast Minchi and Carr, and I would say Carr's Carr is probably a better athlete. Yes, I would say a better athlete, a little bit more polished, um, just in terms of mechanically. I would say, um, but in, in saying that, like I think Minchi, I think throws one of the best deep balls and just says some of the best touch and accuracy yeah. that you're gonna see. The quarterback sneak situation. Yeah. Yeah, don't have to bring in Mitch Evans to to, <laughs> to do that. Right. Um, um, but yeah, like all these ones too, where it's just like it's just timing, and yeah. you know where the ball needs to get out, and it's just the ball is out. And if he's a second late on there, that guy is either getting killed or gets getting picked. Right. right. And um, I I would say too, he has zero fear of this right here, this whole shot right there. Love that throw, right? Yeah, let's throw. It Love, again. yeah. Love that throw, right? Like here, this so window's this, gonna, this yeah. window's closing in a hurry. I mean, we got this. He's you know what is that? Like two yards? Yeah, two yards. He gets to fit it in at, at the perfect time, and guy's got a chance to run. After, yeah, right. So he has no fear of throwing it into tight windows. Um, you know, he's a guy who can, you know, change his arm angle, go to dr drop his foot. He's a guy when he, I, mean, I think this is the throw his, that was referenced in the, yeah, referencing going to his left, chat. going yeah. to his left, throws across his body. And this, I mean, this, that, that, you know, not, I don't know whose bag that's in, you know, that's, I don't know that that's even an Ian books bag right there. I mean, that's a great throw. Yeah. There's another one. Um, and I mean, he's not, uh, he's not huge, but he's not small, right? right. Like he's, he's like CJ Stroud size. And I think everybody knows CJ Stroud's. Been, I mean, look at this throw too. Now, now he's falling backwards. Yeah. He's falling backwards. It's not even back foot. It's literally fading away. <clears throat> he's fading away right there off of one foot. He has to, he has to get this ball. Look, this guy is breaking on it. He has to get it out here. He has to lead him. And when he throws it, he's he's basically spinning. He gets hit as he throws. It's got a. It, there's one spot it can be, and that's where he put it. And by the way, look at this. L look at the look at the little graphic on the bottom here. You can't see it. 14-14 yeah. game in the third quarter. Third and ten. This is a third yeah. down play, and it's a huge explosive. Yeah. So that's. I mean, it's obviously clutch, right? In a tie game. He's got a throw coming up here where it's like he's – I put it on Twitter where he's back – There, off. right there too. It's like just – Yeah, he's – there's mean, a throw on Twitter where – or I put on Twitter where he's – he's uh, he's off of the wrong foot rolling to his right and he throws the ball over a defender. And it's like, wow. Like that's a – that's a big time throw. Um, So what, what I like to look at when I look at quarterbacks too, I'm like – how does he throw? There's pressure in his face. How does he yeah. throw with pressure in his face? If, is this a guy who's just gets to sit back in the pocket all day? Cause it's right. not always going to look like that in college. Right. Right. Yeah. So is, is he a guy that gets the ball out on time? You know, accuracy, all that, of course, all these other things like arm strength, zip on the ball, all that kind of stuff that, that you want to, you want to look at. But then it's like, does he make, are all the guys wide open? Is everything a scheme thing? You know, is everything yeah. a scheme thing that it looks wide open, or is he putting the ball where he needs to when the coverage is tight? Look at this, look at this throw, Jamie. <laughs> what is that? Yeah. What is that? It's yeah. uh, it's off the wrong foot. It's off the wrong foot, and uh, he just flicks it over this yeah. guy. Just flicks it. Look at that. That is wrong footed. Has to get it over him. <laughs> It's right in stride. It's perfect. Oh man, it's it's good stuff, Jamie. It's yeah. good stuff. Um, so I guess to just um kind of go over, you know, where where we think Notre Dame ends up in this um in this recruitment, right? Like obviously just the facts of the the facts of the matter. Um you have um you know, he decommits from Pitt. And, and, and then you, he's taken in a visit to Notre Dame the next weekend, right? Like, yeah. so just those bare facts paint a good picture, right? If it's any other player, you feel good about it. Um, yeah. 
you feel good about Notre Dame landing him and uh, he's going to visit. Do you know if it's an official visit, Jamie? Yeah, that's why he decommitted, right? So, yeah. Yeah, okay, so it is an official, right? So he's official linked to Notre Dame. Um, I, I think, you know, if you, if you go on the uh, – if you go on the, the message board, right? So Matt had an update about that, um, how he feels about it. Uh, he feels good about the situation. Um, so I think it's fair for kind of everyone to feel good about um, Kenny Minchie ended up in the class. I guess, what do you think, what do you think this means? I mean, you mentioned, um, you know, what, what, if you're, if you're Braylon James or if you're Jaden Greathouse or if you're, um, who am I thinking? Rico Flores. If you're if you're thinking if uh, someone like uh, uh, Caleb Smith is is thinking about coming into the class, right? You see that the 2024 guys, right? They see that they obviously have a quarterback in that class as well. You have to. I think that this has to make them feel pretty good, right? Like this is a guy. It's like man, he can get the ball out. You know, he can get the ball out. He can hit me vertical. He's he's accurate that way. Um, he's he can make the throws that I would like. It, 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 as a as a receiver you're looking for the types of throws that he can make and you can see him making those throws um do you feel like that's gonna it, it, this is gonna just further solidify guys like Jaden greathouse who i guess you know went to texas but we don't know how serious that was or whether that that was just going with friends to see a football game he's from texas obviously um so do you feel like this is going to be i don't want to use the term game changer but just a kind of a a solidifier for, yeah. for the I think that's the way to put it. It, 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 it solidifies things because, you know, these guys are waiting for, plus it's they, a box check too. Yeah. yeah. And they thought, you know, most of the guys thought that they were going to play with Dante Moore, and, um, you know, and they're just looking for somebody. They want somebody that they, they can believe in too. So when it's yeah. another four star kid and they see his film and all that, and, they know that I, th I think he's going to the army. Uh, not, not it's not called the army game anymore. The Adidas game or whatever the, the, the all star game. So I think that kind of stuff does matter. Yeah. It, it does matter for for these guys, and um, it just yeah, it's it solidify it solidifies it, and you know puts them at ease. Where I mean I'm I would imagine that if Texas or whoever's talking to a guy like Jaden Greathouse, they'd just be like, well, we got Arch Manning. And they got no one, right? Yeah. So that's just, and that's just reality until yeah. you don't have no one. And that's why it's important. And it's also kind of like why, even if it is a three-star guy that maybe, you know, you see a lot of potential in, but he's he's maybe not as hyped. Um, you know, it, it, it is something that I think these guys look into. The hype kind of does matter. The hype matters. And also like <laughs> Pitt, so... Uh, a lot of high school, a lot of high school players are you know on social media, right? Like so, yeah. there's the whole Twitter's not real, but for high school players, they're on Twitter, right? So it's yeah. real to them. And and Pitt, their their fan base is kind of having a meltdown right now because he was the he was the crown jewel of their class, and now he might be coming over to Notre Dame. I mean, <clears throat> I, I I just think that's super important, right? And and just to have that like the hype, like you talked about, um, and like a late close and. You know, and speaking of the hype, and and I'm going to transition over here to you know Jaden Greathouse and Peyton Bowen. You know, you talked a lot about before Clemson. It's like how big the game was for recruiting, and and again, and I'm I'm in the context of Matt's update, which I again I suggest everyone goes to the. Um, goes to the website and checks out what he said about that. Like, it just seems like that's trending in a really good direction when it seemed like for Peyton Bowen, things were trending in the wrong direction for like two, three months. And, and it's starting to, you know, kind of pick up steam. He, he was, you know, there was talk of him going to Texas last week. He didn't end up going on that trip. And, and he was at the Clemson game. And I just think the Clemson game is so key to, this class i mean it's like we talked about a solidifier i think that clemson game really serves as a solidifier for for pretty much everyone right where it's like no, no, people who aren't wavering but 
it's like you have something in your mind. You know, it's just like a little bit. You're not publicly wavering, but you have something in your mind. I think I think the Clemson game kind of erases all of those things in their minds, and you're and you're fully set to go. And I can't emphasize enough, like how big it is to land Peyton Bowen in this class. He is a legit, like five star talent. It do, he's one of those like it doesn't matter what the measurables say in terms of like what his time forty is. You watch him play, and he is explosive, explosive. Anytime he touches the ball, he's he's making a play with it. He finds a way to make plays. He's got a one handed interception um, from this last week that that I put out on Twitter. It's just it's it's such it's just like to me it's so it's such a big uh, recruitment to win. And um, and I feel like the Clemson game kind of solidified that. Do you do you feel the same way? Yeah, I do. Excuse me. Um, and yeah, I, I I think that they needed that. They absolutely needed that win in like the worst way. Um, because it, it's you know you're trying to sell that you're going to be a big time program. You got to win a big time game, and yeah. that was a big time game. And I think that just that's what what matters. It. And and not even to because for what they're doing for this, it matters to so, to keep the guys that they got, and that's <clears throat> and that's what's most important. Like, yeah, is it going to swing? Um, is it going to swing Key on Keeley back to Notre Dame? No, right? Like, it, it's probably not. But it, well, that that unfortunately, there's no game that would have. <laughs> No, it's not whatever, right? It's just like yeah, just like how people wanted, like, well, Dante Moore will see this. It's like, no, that's not gonna happen because those guys were looking for different things, right? And right. That's fine, whatever, right? But for a guy like Payne Bowen, when you win a game like that and AM is like, I mean, a tire fire in a in a garbage bin full of diapers or whatever, and <laughs> uh um and, and and you know Oklahoma is five and five, right? Like, yeah. I mean, yeah, it does matter. Yeah, and you know, I, and especially like the juice, you know, like like Dylan Edwards, right? Like he could have gone to Notre Dame that week, but he said, "I'm going to go to Kansas State." The Kansas State game. There's no way he didn't have FOMO and f- like seeing everyone storm the field and the way that game went and that crowd. You're committed to them, and it's like man, maybe I should have gone to that game, you know? And it's just like, that's kind of how it is. Like, oh, I want, I want to get back. Like, I want to get back. I want to get back. I want, I want to be around the team. I want, I want to be there. And, and now you have a quarterback coming in and, uh, and, and he's taking an official visit for the last home game, right? Like there's, there's, there's juice kind of around that. Um, you have Aeneas, Aeneas uh, Williams, who is the 2024 running back who is now kind of trending toward Notre Dame, right? Like they have a really good relationship. And if someone like him, who is unlike uh, Jeremiah Love and who's unlike Dylan Edwards, right? Like just like a bigger, thicker power guy, good speed still, right? It's not like he's just a, a, a power back, but he's got good speed. But it's, it's like a different type of runner, right? So that's a complimentary runner, um, top of the board guy for Notre Dame. And now he's training to Notre Dame, right? And he was he at the Clemson game? I feel like he was. He was at the Clemson game. He was at he the Clemson game. He's been he's been multiple times. Right. And so would that I mean who would who could feel better about what happened against Clemson than a, a player like him, right? So um uh, I just think there's a lot going on right now that is like isn't the positive like i feel like recruiting hit hit you know in in september and october it had you know and for a good reason right like there was the team wasn't playing very well and you felt like the momentum was gone and they were starting it was starting to slip away and now they're getting it back right now they're getting it back and and i think there's going to be a close to this class um like uh you know like like you would want right like uh, you know, the, the, there was the, the lions thing, but now they're, they're bringing on Brandon Hillman. Um, I think they're in on Caleb Smith. Um, I mean, what do you think of those two guys? Just like, let's just talk about them. We haven't talked about them as much on the show. Like, what do you think about of those two, which one would you want in the class? Um, and what do you think about Brandon Hillman? Like the football player, like where, where do you see his future being? Hillman? I, I mean, I like Hillman more. I think he's just more explosive. I think, yeah. um, I don't. I'm not even sure where Hill, what Hillman's position is. 
Mm-hmm. But I just think he's such an explosive athlete that you just get him and you just like figure it out. And you say like, I don't even, I mean, I, I think because you already have, and, and, you know, and if you keep Edwards and love in the class, then you're like, okay, maybe this guy doesn't need to play offense. And you maybe look, take him, look at him on defense first. Mm. Um, but it's just another explosive guy that I just think um, you want that type of athlete. And um, I, I think with Smith, I think he's a good speed guy. I, I mean, I kind of want to see more from him as a receiver. Um, yeah. I think that's kind of what is is missing with me. But I, I get it as like another. I think I think you know when I was just talking about with this with Mike on Power Hour, I think the the main thing for this class was they need to upgrade the team speed. Yeah, right. They need to upgrade the team speed. I don't think Notre Dame is fast enough overall as as um, as a team. And I think that's what they're doing in the class. And that's why if you're, these are the kind of guys you want to take late in the cycle. You want guys that at the very least, even if they don't work out, you know, they can run, they can Mm -hmm. run and, 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 and they're fast. And um, I mean, those guys are the guys that you want to like take a chance on rather than, man, this guy's a really good ball player, but like, I'm not just sure about, about his speed. Like, those are the guys that end up you end up taking late and then they never pan out most of the time because they yeah. just like they just don't have that athleticism necessary, right? So mm-hmm. um I yeah, I, I mean I like both of those guys' as takes late in the class as they can get. Yeah, and and I think we saw that with Baylor uh last year, where they had just like a track team and yeah. they they were all kind of hits, right? And it's just like take super fast guys and you know, I don't want to say figure it out. It's like such a cliche. I'll just take them and figure it out, right? But you take a bunch of super fast guys, and at the very least, you have guys that can run. And nothing is more frightening on a football field than speed. That's just true, right? It, it, it affects kind of everything, you know? Um, and so that's that's kind of, you know, what the plan is here. And I think it's a good end when you had the top end guys. You had the guys that you targeted in the summer, and you got them locked in. And it was like an open question about how is Notre Dame actually going to close this class? And it was, it was hard to see, right? You couldn't, um, you couldn't see where or how that was going to happen. And, and then, you know, they, it did it, it, they, it, it, you see it coming together and you say, okay, right. Like we, 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 they, I mean, they closed on Dylan Edwards, right. Looks like they're going to close on Kenny Minchie. And they're, they, they have a really good chance to close on Brandon Hillman and Caleb Smith. And it's like, okay, like we, I get it. Right. And it's like, you, you had like, they had the Ronan Hannafin uh, situation where they missed and he kind of fits that athlete Brandon Hillman uh, kind of mold where it's like, they close on Jeremiah I love. I, I yeah. you know, I've gotten him. Right. But it's like that kind of mold where it's like, I don't know where he's going to play. I don't know if he's a great receiver or what, but it's like a, a really good athlete who can run. And, and that's what they've targeted, and that's what they've gotten, right? And you pair that with Dylan Edwards, who's obviously um, very fast. It's been so long, I almost forgot about Ronan Hannafin. Right, exactly, yeah. yeah. Uh, Jeremiah Love, who's a, who's a sub-4-4 guy on the uh, on electronic 40. Uh, Micah Bell can obviously run. Um, you still have Christian Gray. So it's just a lot there, right? And you talk about team speed was a, was a problem, and uh, that, that's being rectified right now so uh it's a really good um really really good situation there um all right jamie let's transition to uh people's unhappiness with the second half of the football game that we just watched and and i'm interested in your take on it because i like okay everyone looks for like blame right whose fault is it is it is it uh, Tommy Reese's fault? The play calling. Is it? Oh, Jay Lamar. That's right. Thank you, Rajon. Thank you. I appreciate you uh, throwing that in there. Um, I was he was I was thinking about closes to the class, but that's fine. We we we'll, we'll throw in Jay Lamar. Um, uh, anyway, so back to the back to the Navy game in the second half. Everyone's looking for fault. Is it Reese? Is it Pine? Is it you know blocking and that sort of thing? What was your take on the, I guess, the 18 plays in the second half that didn't go very well? Um, I feel like, I mean, 
I broke them all down. It's like easy because there's only 18, so there's not that many plays to break down. But what was your take on it? Like, what, what, where was the, uh, where was the fatal flaw? I guess in what they were trying to do, in your mind. I mean, I think some of it, you know, some of it definitely goes to Tommy Reese because um, I think there were some calls like, um, like should he have attacked the perimeter more? Yeah, right. Um, on, on some called plays, whatever. I will get into the, some of the other stuff yeah. that Pine didn't do later but um i i think he could have done that instead of like some of those like early run especially after the first series when it was just obvious that the like they oh they're just bringing they're just bringing the house and they yeah. Uh, yeah literally 17 of 18 snaps they blitzed so and when we um, say blitz they blitzed like six guys six, yeah six seven like they're guys. going they're going zero cover yes on all of those so yes. that's when they're not sending five you know they're no. they're sending everyone all right so continue um and you know and mixing it up and whatever so um that kind of made it so that's why too when it talks about like the offensive line and what they were doing and stuff i'm not saying like guys couldn't have blocked better but i put like a lot less on them and their blocking or like and even some of the protection stuff it's like you just know that when you're getting that look the ball has to get out the ball has to get out and and it'd be one thing if i think like so i think there's I would have legit beef with the one um, on the v- final drive that they, they got the ball. Notre Dame got the ball with, um, you know, five thirty something to go. And they went max protect and try to go a shot play and basically try to score a touchdown, whatever, end the game. If they got a couple first downs there, game's over, right? They don't, they don't need that shot play. I mean, it would, I mean, if you get it, great, but they didn't need that. So, um, that I had a problem with that call, but aside from that, um, on just about every other one, like even like when you're like Logan Diggs whiffed on the uh blitz pickup, whatever. Well, the ball should have been out anyways. Yeah, like the ball should have been out anyways, or Josh Lug got beat on that. Well, the ball should have been out. The ball yeah. should have been out. like every single time, and there was always like somebody open, right? There was always mm. somebody open. Um, that was your like hot read to get to get rid of the ball to so i mean and that is on pine and then you know as you pointed out with the two plays to start that one drive two straight rpos they're they're playing you know free access like they're like 10 yards off the ball yeah stick route quick out didn't throw it why who knows who knows i can't tell you no one can tell you why or tommy reese couldn't tell you why drew pine didn't throw them. but those are obvious plays that he has to he has to make and if he can't make that and then i mean that's a problem that's a big problem i mean it's game 10 why can't you make it in game 10 you know yeah. like zero blitz into an rpo yeah that's an automatic pull automatic like it, you it's it's like not even it's the the point of the play you know it's so that's that's kind of how I see it. Um, uh, so there's that piece. Th- there were a couple times when I felt like th- they, they were going zero blitz, and it was it, it, it was like they kept trying to take shots right yeah. against it. And and, it, and and to a certain point, it was the one and the one I'm thinking of is the is the uh, the the one where they went max protect. Right, you try to take a shot with Lindsey, which is probably open. I haven't seen the all twenty-two, but I assume. I mean, I just assume he's open because he was literally running right by that guy. And not just that, even if it isn't, take a. You still got to throw it. (laughs) Yeah, yeah. yeah, even if it is, you throw it up, and then you just, even if it's like a bad throw, Lindsey's got to play defense. Whatever, you have to get rid of the ball. Yeah. Yeah. So, the the other part though is like, at that point, they'd or Notre Dame had already shown like, hey, we're we're giving up pressure, even even when, if when we're max protecting. Like we when we have numbers, we're still getting up pressure. So let's not do a deep post, you know. Like maybe let's do like a like a skinny skinny post or like a quick slant or a quick out or something. Like get the ball out a little bit quicker than that. Um, I th- so I thought like it's a it's it's a fine call, right? In theory, but the way the game had gone, I thought maybe it'd be better to do something where it, like you don't need as much time 
in that situation. <laughs> um, there was another instance where so they they got the ball around midfield. They went quick bubble to Mayor on a, on a play where they sent the house, right? You got six off it. If you look to the other side of the field, Jaden Thomas and uh, I think it was Braden Lindsay are on the, on the, on to the field side and, and the slot and outside. And, and, and Jaden Thomas is essentially uncovered in the slot, right? He has the safety on him, but he's like 10 yards off, right? Well, just run the same play. Just run bubble the other way. Yeah. You know, they're giving it to you, right? I, I, I they're, they're, they're letting you have it, right? That's the whole point. It's like we're sending seven. And if you can't beat – your guys can't beat Navy in space enough to get, you know, five, six yards and those things, then, I mean, you deserve to lose. Like, Well, it's, it's, it's not deserve to lose. It's like that's just the better – that's the better tactical decision because what they did instead was they took those guys off the field and then they just went heavy. Yeah. That no wide receivers, you know, they had <coughs> Jaden Thomas out there, but they split him inside. So he's essentially a tight end. Yeah. It's like, well, that's what Navy wanted. They want the game to be compacted. Yeah. Like they, they want that because they are super vulnerable to the outside. Like you're blitzing heavy, you're blitzing zero, zero blitz. You're taking a chance that like, Hey, they could get, they could get one on our DBs. Yeah. Well, you take all the receivers off the field. That's great for Navy because then they're thinking, oh, good. Like we can blitz everybody and we don't have to worry about it. So that that was where I I, I kind of had a disagreement with like, like you gotta they're 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 taking a chance here. You gotta punish them for that. Um so Alakino's tired of running the ball in second along. Uh we, we all are this all we year all are Al. I don't like it. Um um I, I don't like it. So I, I understand that. Rajon says, take what they give you. We say that every week. Uh, we do say it every week. We do, Jeremy. And it's, uh, it's a little frustrating. It's a little frustrating. Um, I do disagree with this comment from Rajon. Whole team came out second half, not ready to play. Freeman's in charge of that. No, live and learn. I didn't think the defense came out, not ready to no. play. I thought, I thought, because the first drive, first of all, you're off the field. It's a fourth down. And you're yeah. off the field, and they call the penalty on DJ Brown. Uh, that was which, a bad call. Which, in my opinion, is, is a farce. And they were a farce all day, all right? And they go down, and then they, they end up kicking a field goal, right? Like, that's not – that's not. They had a 10-minute drive. They end up kicking a field goal. That's a right, win for the defense. Right, that's a win for the defense, absolutely, right? And then the offense does nothing. And then the defense stops them. The defense had a three and out right after that, in fact. Yeah. And not only did they have a three and out, it was it – was, lost yardage right so it was negative yards for navy they had a three and out right after that then drew pine throws the pick which sets navy up at the sudden change they score a sudden change they score and then after that the defense two, stopped outs. them two three and outs right after that too like the defense gave the offense plenty of opportunities to yeah. extend the lead in this game and just take it over and they never did Right. So I didn't think the defense came out and played poorly. The only thing that I didn't like from the defense was at the end of the game when Al Golden. Yeah, they didn't have a good they didn't have a good plan for. That yeah, I, I didn't like that. He went prevent um, in in the in the the final half of that drive where it was like you're letting Navy just run like, yeah, you, you got to make this backup guy beat you through the air, you know. And so I, I, did, I didn't like that, but. I mean, for to but for to to say the defense as a whole didn't play very well. Like I just kind of disagreed with that in the second half. I thought they played fine. Um, so that was that was just kind of my take on it. Um, I mean, I, I guess the question of where does Notre Dame go from here with this because. It's one thing to say, like, okay, Drew Pine's having a bad game. You know, bless you. It's one thing to say Drew Pine's having a bad game, like we've seen, right? It's like, ah, oh, we don't have a, we're not having a great Drew Pine performance in this game. And then you're having a great one in the first half. And then the second half, it goes away. Like, that is, to me, it's, it's like, as for a coach, too, it's got to be super concerning because it's like, you think you know what you're getting and you don't. Right. It, it just kind of goes away like and there's a question about Angeli. You know, what does uh, P Peter Devitz Devistu says, what more does it take for the staff to give Angeli a shot? If any other player was playing that bad, they would get benched. Um, 
That's true. The problem is, is that there's no other player like the quarterback. If 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 uh, if Houston Griffiths having a bad game at safety, they can just bring in someone else. But Houston, like they're not going to be the focal point of the play every single time, you know. And the quarterback is the focal point of the play every single time. And not just that, but they Navy was ensuring that the quarterback was going to be the most important player on every single play, right? It wasn't like Clemson where they could hand it off and the, and the game then gets put on the offensive line and the running backs. It was all quarterback. Like this game would have been a terrible time for Angeli to come in because it's like you're, you're throwing them to the fire, right? Like, you know, blitzes and all those other things. Um, so, but I don't know, Jamie, I mean, we get asked this question kind of every week, right. And it comes up every week. Um, is there a way where it's like bad enough to where it's like, okay, we got to go to Angeli. Like, will that happen short of injury? Do you think? I don't think so at this point. I just like, I, I mean, maybe multiple picks, multiple picks that just like put them in, in that kind of situation. But I, but I think the one thing to with like say like Pine right now that doesn't get you know in terms of some of the stuff that he does like post snap or whatever, but you know he is someone that you know pre snap in terms of what they're doing in terms of like getting into the right running play and and, and all of these kind of things, he's obviously done pretty well with that, um, and we have no idea if Angeli can do that at all. And that might just be just way too much for him right now. So um, that's why it's so easy for me, for me or you or anyone to say, I mean, yeah, Pine isn't good. We know, I think everybody knows that Drew Pine isn't going to be the quarterback next year. I think that's pretty fair to assume. Um, And so they know that part already. They know he's not the long-term answer at quarterback, but they're looking at who's going to the best to win this game. And believe me, if they thought Angeli was the best guy to, to get them to win the game, they'd play him right now. I, I don't think like, cause it's not like Drew Pine is, is Reese's guy and whatever. Angeli's his guy too, right? Like if he thought that that was the case, he would, I, I, I'm confident if they thought that Angeli was the answer, they would have played him by now. Yeah. And, 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 you know, what what Reese said is, um, is true. Like there are pre-snap things that have to get taken care of just on every play. Like it's just, that's just true. And you have to be able to do it for the offense to function at all. Um, and that's part of it, right? And if Pine does that better than Angeli, then it's kind of a no-brainer. Um, and I think what CFB Hurt says is true. Like the simple fact there's a greater than 90% chance that Angeli would be worse than Pine. I think, which isn't to say that Angeli can't do anything well. That's not that's not to say that, but like we do have to remember, and this is, I tweeted out, Drew, Drew Pine won Notre Dame the football game. He accounted for five touchdowns. That's They could not run in this game. They could, they did not help him in that way. He was not helped by the running game and they, they won the game because Drew Pine scored five touchdowns in the first half. And that is just a fact. It, it, there's no way to see it. Um, so it, it, it's like, can you get that from Steve Angeli? Right. Notre Dame counted on Drew Pine to win the game and they did. Can they count on Steve Angeli to win a game like this, like that when they can't run the ball? Can can they can they win any game with Steve Angeli if they can't run the ball? I don't, I don't know that they can. I don't know that they would have won this game. So it's it's just like that's the the conundrum that Notre Dame is in right now, and and I don't know. Go ahead. Here's like a weird analogy, but it if I think it kind of fits for this. So um, I'm from Vancouver. I was you know the 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 Grizzlies were there. They were horrible when I was there. Uh, They got stolen by Michael Isley. What a piece of crap. 
uh, just need to throw that in. Um, and um, they didn't get a fair sh- shake at having a, a, an NBA franchise. But um, in their first and second year, Lawrence Moden, who college basketball fans will remember, was a very good, he was a star guard at Syracuse. Well, he was a second round pick, I believe, in their first year. And he was a guy who came in, lit it up every time he came in. It was always garbage time, right? Yeah. And you're like, man, Lawrence Moan's getting his, right? Like you're just whatever. And everyone was like, and you'd go to these games and the Grizzlies sucked. They were terrible. And there were literally people who yelled were like because the the crowd was so like dead because they began killed they were like yelling at the coach like put in mode in like like just f you whatever put in mode and like they would just be like yelling at him like like modin was this like fan favorite guy right well it turned out lawrence modin who was a very good college player and a good garbage time guy i mean this guy never even played in the nba again like he never even did anything so obviously this guy couldn't play for whatever reason but you know, as fans, people just were like attached to this. They saw this glimpse and they saw that. So I don't, and I'm not saying that Steve Angeli is not going to be a good quarterback for Notre Dame. Hey, who knows? He might be the starter next year. Who knows? Who knows? Right. But people see based off of, you know, some reports of, of we saw in practice, which he did look really good in practice, but we barely saw any practice. And the, 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 we barely saw any practice where they were wearing pads and even, and then the one, and then he barely gets in, he gets in again versus the threes. I mean, the deep ball he threw in practice was to Xavier Watts, who was playing receiver that week. So it's yeah. like not something that is, you know, whatever. And then, you know, he was on scout team. He did, he did a nice job in the spring game. People see these clips and they're like, I mean, he's got to play because they see these nice things and it's like, he's got to be better than pine. And the reality is we don't know. We don't know if he's better than pine. He could be just Lawrence Moden, right? Like we yeah. just don't know. Um, and I think it's just one of those things where it's like um, right now, if Angeli, maybe he plays in the bowl game. Maybe he starts in the bowl game. I don't know, right? But, like, I just think at, at this point where we're at in the season, I just I'm, – I'm highly doubtful they would ever play him unless it was just, like, an epic, like, either Drew Pine gets hurt or it's just, like, an epic collapse by Drew Pine. I, I just don't think – I just think they 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 believe that Drew Pine can execute the offense. And, and they have reason to think that. It's not like they don't, you know? Drew Pine outdueled Drake May. Fact. Fact. Um, Drew, Drake May is a better player, yeah. but he he gave him 45 points. There's no yeah. there's no other way to see it, right? Like, that's just true. Um, um P, I just bring up Peter Davis's comment here. You know, uh the 12 one half offense? 12 yards yeah. offense. Okay. It can't get worse. Are you familiar with Cade Klubnik? <laughs> Remember, he came into the game, and that's what they were thinking. It can't get worse. And then the guy threw a pick in their own red zone. And then he never played again. So it's – it maybe could get worse is yeah. what we don't know, right? So – because for all we know, Angeli goes there and he's just like, I don't know, and throws it right to a guy. We don't know, yeah. right? Um, uh, J- Jamie, this is an important question. Who is the uh, – Joel Easton says, who is the big country of Notre Dame football? Oh, man. Um, I, I mean, if we're talking, um, if we're talking a fat out of shape guy who, who, um, just was, couldn't play defense. You don't slander um, Bryant Reeves like that. Bryant Reeves was horrible for the Grizzlies. It was a horrible contract. <laughs> Stu Jackson, get rid of this guy from, he never should be around an NBA team ever again. Um, no big country. Nice guy. Uh, Big country, nice guy, but Bryant Reeves wasn't good in in the pros. Great, great college basketball. Great college player. player. Great, great college, college player at Oklahoma State. Uh, so I'm going to go Oklahoma State version of big country, and I'll say that is Kurt Heinisch. Oh, yeah, Kurt Heinisch. So 
you'd have to go for uh i mean like riley mills is probably a pretty good one uh they've got kind of the same build i guess um kurt heinish is pretty good though big country bryant reeves oklahoma state i, I feel mean, like i mean he's i mean obviously he's a pittsburgh guy so he's not a country guy yeah and i don't even know i mean notre dame doesn't have too many guys that are country they don't they don't yeah. have too many guys yeah. that are country on the team. Yeah, I'm trying point. to think of a guy who, like, I mean, John Dirksen. John Dirksen would have been thing. He was like from like I lived on a farm and in a small town in Ohio, played like a very low level of Ohio football. Yeah. John Dirksen, big country, but I don't want to slander big country's name because obviously Dirksen didn't play that much at Notre Dame. But yeah. in terms of just profile, yeah, that makes sense. Um Justin asks, is Pine ahead of Buckner for 2023 at this point? Wasn't the quarterback battle and fall pretty close, and now Pine has the experience? I don't think it was that close. I don't think it was um, close. They, didn't, I, but they, they named it early. It is an interesting question, though, in terms of just not like if he's in head of Buckner, but like what does Buckner do? Like that is a very interesting like storyline. It's all kind of messy for him, unfortunately. It, it, this year was really – just a bummer because he he needed to play of of all the things that could have he happened needed the experience he needed to play the season and he didn't get it and it really puts his career in flux it, it, it could go a lot of different ways that I don't even want to um I don't even want to like speculate on it because it just you don't know how it could go it you really don't um like there could be coaching changes uh transfer portal stuff. You know, Kenny Menchie might join the class. And so then you have, you know, Angeli, Menchie, what does Drew Pine do? Um, so, you know, you have you have uh, CJ Carr who's coming in in 2024. It's just there's a lot there. There's a lot to consider for him. Uh, um, it's, uh, it's a tough situation. My guess is um, Buckner will be around next year and – uh, you know, he'll try to compete um, yeah. for the job and all that. And I think that also, too, this is the other thing. Um, he's also – most of these guys who pick Notre Dame pick it for the reasons that they're like uh, – especially when they commit early. Like they yeah. want the Notre Dame degree. His – I believe his sister committed for to Notre Dame soccer. Yeah. Um, or signed, I think, maybe. Yeah. Uh, to Notre Dame soccer. So, yeah. Um, I think uh, uh, thanks, uh, S. Gomez. Let's appreciate right. that. Um, um, I yeah, I think that uh, I, I I imagine that he will stick around and and be in the quarterback room. But I, I mean, where he slotted, who knows? Who knows? But I mean, the other thing is that like you could say like, well, if you're Drew Pine. You're like, does he want to stay around? And so they, let's assume they get a transfer portal quarterback. He he wants to stay around and be the backup. You know, like I don't know if he wants to do that because yeah. he will have his degree, right? So, yeah, yeah. Um, and I think he, you know, he would probably want to play. So, um, so I don't know. I mean, it's all. I mean, who knows? The quarterbacks, it's so unpredictable. Um, it's been a while since they had somebody. I mean, I think. Gunnar Keel was the last one they had that was like there for like a year and left. Yeah. Everybody else has kind of stuck it out for like a little bit. Um, you know, uh, and, and mo most of them got their degrees. Yeah. Um, what I would say is it, he, he would always have utility because of his running ability. Um, so there's that. The other thing is, is there's a history of Notre Dame quarterbacks. Like if you just hang around and hang around, You'll get your opportunity to uh, Drew Pine, Drew Pine, Ian Book, Tommy Reese, right? Yep. Uh, Deshaun Kaiser, just just be there. There's there's great there's great value in being the backup quarterback at Notre Dame because it just seems like something always happens. So um, that's it. We're gonna leave it there for uh, today. Thank you everyone for tuning in. Uh, really good turnout today. I really appreciate that. If this is your first time and you like what you heard here, hit the subscribe button. Hit the like button. Uh, we're going to be back on Thursday previewing uh, Boston uh, College. Hold on. One thing. 
throw up Bootang's thing here. This guy, even though he's misspelled Rocco, Rocco, Rocco Spindler is big country. Rocco, that's Rocco that's Spindler, big it is. You, you nailed it, Bootang. Bootang, good for you. Never seen you in the show before. Thank you for being here. Hit the hit the like, hit the subscribe button. Really appreciate it. Thank you very much, everybody. Back on Thursday, preview BYU, same time, eleven thirty Eastern. 8.30 Pacific time. We appreciate everyone being here. Check out irsportsdaily.com for all the latest on uh, recruiting and all those other things. And uh, we will talk to you guys on Thursday.